Yo, what's up, YouTube? So this is gonna be another optimization guide. I think this is like my fourth one or something, but I've unlisted all the other ones because they're kind of outdated at this point. Right here, you can see the results of this guide on my own computer on a fresh 1809 install. The changes I made for the before benchmarks were I disabled Windows Update and I changed the power plant to high performance and everything else should be default Windows. Alright, so preferably you would want to do a fresh install of Windows 10. Version 1709 is the best overall version, and Windows 10 1809 is going to be the best if you play ESCA or Face It, and if you want to use ray tracing. So if you're on like 1903 or 1909, you probably want to downgrade to one of those versions because it just gets worse the higher you go up in terms of frame rates and latency and stuff like that. If you're on 1903 or 1909, you probably should just downgrade and then come back to this video. All right, quick little disclaimer. This guide is tested on two different Intel NVIDIA desktops, so an Intel CPU, NVIDIA graphics card. It is not tested on laptops or AMD systems, and I think that you should be comfortable with the idea of reformatting your windows if something goes wrong so that way you know how to reinstall windows and if you don't know how to do that then in all honesty this guide probably isn't for you and you should wait until you learn how to do that before you come back to this one all right so if you are going with the reinstall windows route if you're going with 1709 or 1809 or something then you should unplug your internet cable during the install process to avoid windows update and watch this guide on your phone or on a laptop or something until I tell you it's good to plug in your internet cable again and then you can start watching from your actual computer. So one of the first things we would do on a fresh install of Windows is we'd go activate it really fast. You can just follow the steps on the screen but the reason why we have to do that first is because next we're going to be disabling Windows Update, which would lock us out of the activation servers because Windows Activation uses Windows Update to communicate with Microsoft. So that's why we have to do it first. All right, now that Windows is activated, let's disable Windows Update. We'd start by typing in Advanced System Settings in the search bar. Go to the Hardware tab, Device Installation Settings, make sure that is set to No. Now that's the first step done. Next, we'll do gpedit.msc, enter. Computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, scroll down to Windows update. So you'll configure automatic updates disabled. We don't want automatic updates configured. Specify Microsoft update service location. Paste this link into all three boxes. Enable it, okay. Remove access to use all Windows Update features, yes. Do not connect to any Windows Update internet locations, yes. Do not include drivers with Windows Updates, yes. And now Windows Update should be disabled. But just to make sure, we'll go to services.msc, scroll down to Windows Update, stop the Windows Update service, and disable it on startup type. So now it should 100% be off we're not getting Windows Update anymore. Okay, let's quickly do some basic stuff. Let's right click the taskbar, untick show people, show task view, go to Cortana, select hidden. Let's go down to start next, user account control. Drag that all the way to the bottom. Okay, next let's type mouse and start, go to mouse settings, additional mouse options, pointer options, untick enhanced pointer precision. And then we will go to start again, right click it this time, file explorer, this PC, local disk C, properties, untick allow files in this drive to have contents indexed, apply changes to C drive and subfolders, continue, ignore all. And now we wait a couple minutes and that step is complete. Next up is display driver uninstaller. We're gonna go to MS config really fast, go to boot, and select safe mode. And now after we download and install display driver on installer, we can reboot to safe mode, open it up. I'm not in safe mode, but I've already done this step, but I couldn't record it in safe mode, so that's the reason. Um, go to audio, sound blaster, clean and don't restart, real tech, clean and don't restart, same thing. Go to the GPU tab, Intel, clean and don't restart, AMD, clean and don't restart and then nvidia clean and don't restart well actually no you do clean and restart because that's all of them done next so here we're going to be installing open shell because we'll be disabling cortana so the default start menu won't work 
So let's go ahead and just run the installer. Once you get to this page, um, disable every feature except for the open shell menu. And then you can just click next, install, finish. And now if we go down to start, it opens up a menu for us. You can play around with settings if you want, but I have them all saved on a uh, XML file. Just a lot quicker to set up that way. So you can just load in the uh, XML file if you want. And then once we go down, you'll see it's, uh, it's all set up for me. If you want to change the skin, you can do that as well. A lot of skins to pick from. Windows Arrow is like the Windows 7 looking skin, so I actually prefer that one. And yeah, that's done. All right, let's install this old version of DirectX and enable .NET 3.5. These are good for compatibility. They let you play old games and run old programs. They don't slow your system down at all, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and install it. It's very straightforward with DirectX. You just run DX setup, accept the agreement, next, next, and installs for you. Very quick, like it takes two seconds. Now to enable .NET. Without Windows Update, you need to type CMD and start. Run as administrator. Copy paste this line. Change the E next to source to whatever drive your us your like windows 10 installation is on so if you're on um d d is a common usb drive letter you would change the e to a d mine's e so i keep it at that let's go to windows features make sure it's on okay really quickly let's set up our sound settings so we'll start by going to start typing sound sound card settings disable all the devices in here that you aren't using so I don't use my Blue Yeti speakers, so turn that off. Disable all the microphones I'm not using. Turn off Windows Sounds. Communications, set it to do nothing. You can clean up this area by just unticking those two things. Now let's go to our speakers, properties. Disable all sound effects, but I personally turn on loudness equalization because that lets me hear footsteps and see us a bit better. Turn off exclusive mode, set the audio format to, um, I use 16-bit 44.1, but honestly, I don't think it matters too much. I think 24-bit 48 is fine. And I just make my microphone match the format my headphones are using. Let's quickly set up our advanced system settings. So let's go down to start, advanced system settings. Under performance, click settings adjust for best performance, and then tick show thumbnails instead of icons, show windows contents while dragging, and if you don't like the way the font looks, you can enable that. I don't mind it, so I keep it off. Apply, go over to the advanced section, virtual memory, untick automatically manage paging file, and disable the paging file of your main hard drive, your main SSD, and then put it onto your secondary hard drive if you need to. I personally need to because I only have 8 gigabytes of RAM, so I'd be blue screening every other time I open Vegas if I didn't. Um, local disk C on system protection. If it's on, disable it. Delete the system restore points, go over to remote. Untick allow remote assistance, and then a tick allow on the second one, and then retick don't allow. Again, that resets the regedit key. Now it's time for gpedit.msc. Go to start, type in gpedit. .msc. You don't need to open it as an administrator or anything. Go to Computer Configuration, System, Group Policy, Continue Experiences on this device, set that to Disabled. Start Menu and Taskbar, Notifications, Turn off Notifications Network Usage, Yes. Windows Components. Windows error reporting, disable Windows error reporting, enabled, apply, okay. Next, we are going to go up to data collection. Allow telemetry, disabled. Now we're going to go to user configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, data collection, allow telemetry, disabled. And that is it for GP Edit. All right, now it's time to install NVIDIA drivers. Driver 425.31 is the best for most things. 441.08, Apex Legends and Modern Warfare. We'll install them using NV Slimmer. This will get rid of all the bloatware and stuff, so you can just download it from the link in the description, run it, select whichever driver you're gonna go with. I went with 425. Let it load the driver package. 
and it automatically unticks most of the bloatware. Um, PhysX isn't needed for a lot of games. There's like 90 games or something that use PhysX, so most people can untick that. We can just click apply. Okay. Install a driver. Yes. And then just go and install the driver like normal. Complete. Now we're quickly going to update some other drivers using Snappy Driver Installer Origin, not normal. Um, download it, run the 64-bit version, accept. Download indexes only, the bottom box. Let it download the indexes of you know the drivers you'll need. Do not install anything chipset related. You don't need it, it's bloatware. Keep it off your computer, you'll be better off. So the things you do want to update are things like your USB drivers that's probably going to be beneficial. Your audio drivers, it's probably also going to be beneficial. Your internet drivers would be good. Uh, host bridge DRAM registers, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I like the sound of it, so I'll update that. And the PCI controller driver can be updated as well. And then once you select all the ones that you're going to update, just click install. And toward the after it installed the PCI driver, OBS crashed because that's what I was recording with, my graphics card encoder. But you get the idea, just finish installing and you're good. Real quick, let's install Unlocker, download it, run it, install it. When you get to the toolbar part, go to Advanced, Untick, Install Delta Toolbar, Next, Next, Untick, Check for Unlocker Updates, Next, Finish. Now we're going to go on to Deleting Bloat, run the Windows 10 Apps Manager as Administrator, click Remove All, let it do its thing for like 10-20 seconds. It'll say uninstalled successfully, hit OK, and you're done with that. For this next part, you'll need a take ownership reg file, which you can get from the description. So just merge it, and then you're good after that. Next, we'll go to start this PC, local disk C, program files, and now you'll need to click view at the top and tick show hidden items. Windows apps, we need to take ownership of this folder to be able to access it. So let's do that real quick. Click continue. Now that we're in here, we need to delete every single folder. So control A, delete. Continue. If it gives you an error, a try again error, just skip. Now you see we're left with the Microsoft Office Hub. So I'm gonna go into the folder delete everything I can, and then just continue doing that until we've deleted everything. So just keep going deeper until you delete everything you can. Everything in Windows Apps is clear now. Don't delete the Windows Apps folder, keep it there. Just delete out all the contents. Next, we're going to System Apps under the same area. Take ownership of that folder. You'll want to delete everything except Shell Experience Host. Do not delete Shell Experience Host. Your taskbar won't work, and it's kind of hard to get it working again. Even if you have the folder and stuff added there, it won't work unless you do like a couple more steps. So just don't delete it. Save yourself a giant headache. Um, we'll see here that Cortana is being used, so let's go to Task Manager. We need to end the process and then try again. So highlight it, delete on the keyboard, click try again at the same time, should be good. Now the input app is also being used, so there's the exe for the input app. Delete on the keyboard, click try again, and then everything's deleted except for the shell experience host because we want that. Okay, now we're going to be deleting a bunch of Windows programs that we don't need. So let's go to the Windows folder, go down to syswow64. And let's search for Flash Player. Delete both things that come up using Unlocker. So you would click Unlocker, Delete, okay. 
and just do this, repeat this step for every program on here. So, Flash Player is done. Let's get out of uh, SysWow64, just back to the C Windows folder. Now let's search Help Pane, delete it. Okay, now we're going into Windows System 32. Search Background Task Host, delete the exe. Search Game Bar, delete the Presence Writer. Game Panel, delete that. Magnify, delete that. MBL CTR, delete it. Mob Sync, delete it. Narrator, delete it. Osk, delete that. Smart screen, delete it. If it gives you an error like this, go to Task Manager, Details, find smartscreen.exe. Get the uh, end message and get the unlocker menu open, end the process, and then delete it immediately after. It's fairly simple. After we're done with smart screen, wsclient.dll, delete it. wscollect, delete it. Now we need to delete three folders. So find the Macromed folder and Windows System 32, delete that. Then find the Macromed folder and SysWow64 and delete that as well. Then we're going to App Data, Adobe. Just go back and delete the entire Adobe folder. And there we go. All right, for the Win Arrow Tweaker part, download and extract the portable version, then run the exe as administrator, hit I agree. This page will come up under appearance. Let's go down to dark color scheme. And if you want to use the dark theme on File Explorer and the system apps, then you can untick both of those. Now under behavior, ads and unwanted apps, tick the top one, that'll automatically tick the rest. Then let's go to check disk timeout at boot, change it to zero. Disable arrow shake, disable arrow snap, tick the top one. Disable app lookup and store and disable automatic maintenance. Disable downloads blocking. Disable driver updates, we already did that. Disable MRT from installing. Disable timeline. Already disabled Windows Update. Disable error reporting. Disable Windows Hibernate. Menu show delay, set it to zero. New apps notification, disable that. Power throttling, disable power throttling. Screensaver grace period, set it to zero. Show BSOD details instead of the sad smiley, tick that. Split threshold will set later with regedit, so you don't have to worry about it for now. Boot options, um, you can untick all three of these if you want, but I personally like having the Windows logo, so I'll leave that one on. Then let's go down to disable lock screen and disable that. Lock screen slideshow duration, set it to zero. Under desktop and taskbar, turn off action center, live tiles, and quick action buttons, as well as disable web search. 
Untick hover to select for virtual desktop. Pin more than three contacts to taskbar, set it to zero. Wallpaper quality, set it to 100. Remove default entries. Pin to start, pin to taskbar. Troubleshoot compatibility. Under settings control panel, disable online and video tips and settings and hide the insider page. Tick uh, disable automatic folder type discovery and the compressed overlay icon. Remove the 3D objects from customized this PC folders. Disable jump lists. Disable search history. Set file explorer starting folder to this PC. Navigation pane default items. Untick everything except for removable drives and this PC. User accounts, let's disable UAC. Windows Defender, let's click disable Windows Defender. Untick protection against unwanted software and untick Windows security slash Defender tray icon. Auto update store apps, tick it. Disable Cortana, disable Windows Inc. workspace. Disable telemetry under privacy. Shortcuts, disable the hyphen shortcut text and get classic apps, activate the classic photo viewer. And then set it as your default photo viewer. And now you're done with this part. All right, let's head into the Windows features. So go down to start, type turn Windows features on or off. Now you want to untick Internet Explorer 11, enable legacy components, direct play, untick media features, untick print, Microsoft print, everything basically from there on out, just untick it. Um, if you use Windows Media Player and you don't plan on using something like VLC Media Player, then you should just keep Windows Media Player on. Now for disabling some Windows services, let's get in sudo, run in sudo.bat as administrator, enable all privileges, and now let's find the services bat file to run, so disable services, run it, press any key to continue, it'll do its thing, it'll be done, and after that we should restart our computer. When we boot back in, let's open in sudo once again as administrator. Enable all privileges, services.msc, run. And now the services I disable right here are the clipboard user service. It doesn't let you change the startup type. I think you'll have to do that through regedit for this particular service, but I just left it. I disabled network list service. If you use Wi-Fi, you would keep these enabled. Network Location Awareness. Task Scheduler, I don't use. I use the normal startup folder that I will show in a bit. Time Broker, I don't know. Really, I haven't tested it too much. So I just left it on. Windows Event Log, turn that off and then we're done in here. All right, now for the GPU side of things, let's hop into NVIDIA control panel. We'll start from the bottom to the top. Adjust image settings, tick use NVIDIA settings and de-tick uh, the interlacing one. Go up, use NVIDIA settings. Um, preferably you want this on no scaling display, but I don't have the display option. And I like playing black bars in CS, so I'll be setting it to aspect ratio. Adjust desktop color settings. Use NVIDIA settings, and I slide up Digital Vibrance to around 80%. Change resolution, I set it to 1920, 144. Configure surround PhysX. I know we didn't install PhysX, but I'm still going to set it to the GPU anyway. Manage 3D settings, don't worry about this for right now. 
and we're done in here. Okay, now it's time for NVIDIA Inspector. Let's download it. Run as administrator. Go to the import option, import profiles, import base profile.nip, accept, apply changes, and we're done with that. Now let's go into NVPM Manager, accept, create power miser settings, yes. Enable power miser feature, fixed performance level, max performance, minimum power save, max performance, minimum power save, instant apply, and we're done with that. All right, let's hop into device manager. Go to start, search for device manager, open it. We need to turn off the power saving features for the USB root hubs under universal serial bus controllers. Let's go up a bit to human interface devices. Disable the power saving features for every USB input device on the list. Go down the keyboards, make sure there's no power saving on these. Turn off the power saving feature for our network adapter. Now let's go get into disabling devices. You can see on screen, this is a list of everything I disable. You can follow it if you want. So I'm gonna start by disabling the speakers on Realtek HD Audio. Human interface devices, gonna disable the HID compliant consumer control devices. Gonna do the same thing for the compliant vendor defined device. Go down to monitors, turn off the generic PNP monitor. Under other devices, I'm going to disable the PCI simple communications controller. Under sound, I'm going to turn off high definition audio device because I use Realtek. Software devices, I'll turn off the Wavetable synth. Ports, I'll turn off the communications port and the printer port. System devices. Composite bus enumerator, turn that off. I have two HD audio controller drivers. I'll turn off the one that is connected to my graphics card. I'll turn off the high precision event timer. Turn off the Microsoft System Management BIOS driver. Turn off the Virtual Drive Enumerator. Turn off the Virtual Network Adapter Enumerator, the Numeric Data Processor. Programmable Interrupt Controller. Remote Desktop. Turn off the system timer. Turn off the UM bus enumerator. And now we're going to show hidden devices and uninstall every transparent device on the list. These are drivers that your computer has saved, but they aren't actually being used.
And now a quick storage tweak is if you go to disk drives, right click, properties, policies, tick the bottom one, turn off windows, write cache buffer. That should speed up your hard drives a little bit. All right, now for the power plan, drag optimized power.pow into your C drive. Go to start, type CMD, run as administrator. Copy paste this line, imported power scheme successfully, start, power options, select that one. Now we're gonna go delete the other power plans that we aren't using. So let's type PowerShell, run as administrator. PowerCFG slash list to bring up the rest. Now we do power CFG space hyphen delete and then copy paste the power scheme GUID. So it's the string of numbers and letters. And you do that for everyone. And don't worry, you can't delete your own power scheme. It'll say, you know, you're using this, you can't delete it. Just repeat this for the rest. And then we're done. All right, specter and meltdown is very simple. You'll run inspector.exe. It'll tell you if you need to run the regedit or not. If it says yes and yes on the first two, you need to. So it says yes for me. I'll run this regedit when I restart my computer. The first two will say no instead of yes, and that means we're good. Okay, this part is also very simple. We'll download an app called Unpark CPU, run it as administrator. And because of our power plan, the cores should be unparked, but this is just to double check to make sure they actually are. If they aren't for you for whatever reason, then you can unpark them with that app. Okay, now for the interrupt affinity tool, let's go ahead and install it. And I agree, next, 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 close. Go to start this PC, local disk C, program files 86, Microsoft Corporation, interrupt affinity policy tool, run the 64 bit version, should be in the middle. So the reason why we're doing this is because by default, most of your drivers are running on core zero. Moving them away will improve like everything. These are the devices we'll be setting right now. I wouldn't set anything other than these. Let's go set our GPU really quick. So I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard, take me to NVIDIA GTX 970, set mask. And if you have hyper threading on, it'll look like this. And you would wanna set it to the core and the thread. So this is core one thread one, core two thread two, core three thread three, core four thread four. So that's how you would set it if you had that. So that's core two thread two. So we would set it to core number two and thread number two to move it away from core one. But without hyperthreading, it's a lot more straightforward. You just set it to core one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna set it to core two. Okay. You'll get an error. Everyone gets it, you're fine. Now let's set the PCI port of the GPU to the same core as the GPU. So the way you can tell is go to device manager, view devices by connection. This is my PCI controller for my GTX 970. So we'll right click it, go to properties. You'll see the location, PCI bus zero, device one function zero. You can see it matches that on the interrupt affinity tool. So we'll set it to core one as well. The same core as the GPU. Now let's do the same thing for the USB drivers. Controller. So that is device 20. That's a uh, bus two. Okay, so this is PCI bus zero device 20. So this is the one that we're looking for. This is a USB controller. We'll set it to core number three. We don't want to put it on the same thing as our GPU because it works best on its solo core. Now it's type A for as media because that's one of my other USB controllers. We'll put that onto the same core 
as the other USB controller. Now let's find the PCI port that the uh, As Media is on. So it's right here, right click that, properties. So we're looking for device 28, so we'll type P until we find the PCI to PCI bridge that we're looking for. It's right there, set mask, CPU 3. And now we are done setting our affinities. I know I didn't cover it very well in this video, but I'm trying to keep the pace going quick so this video doesn't get too long. If you want to watch a more in-depth tutorial on the Interop Affinity tool, I will link one in the description. It's much better than this one. You'll probably understand things a lot better. Now to run some regedit and bat files. Let's start with opening the CMD files folder, going into BCD edit. Run all of these as admin if something doesn't quite work well on your computer you can always run the revert to default so you should be good and what this does is it disables virtualization disables some power saving features disables uh, the synthetic windows timer and stuff tsc has three different options for you to use default enhanced being the other two legacy works best for me and it does work best for most people in terms of latency so that's what i use but you can try all three to see which works for you. Next we'll run Xbox Fix and then move over to the registry files. I have default, tweaked, mark C, and personal. So let's head into the tweaked folder. For the split threshold, there's an 8GB and a 16GB version. 8GB is how much RAM I have. If you have 16 gigs, you should use the other one. Just run the rest of the regedit files. And there are default versions of those files if you are experiencing some weird stuff on your computer. Now this next program is probably one of the best things you can do in this entire guide. It forces your Windows timer resolution, and it's a RAM cleaner on top of that. So for the timer resolution part, you want to put wanted timer resolution 0.50. Enable custom timer resolution, tick that, start it. Make sure the current timer resolution goes down to 0.5. If it does not go down to 0.5, then you need to enable high precision event timer in your BIOS and make sure it's disabled in Windows. And now for the standby list, you want to set the first box to 1 gigabyte, so 1024 megabytes. And set the second box to half of your RAM in megabytes. So I have 8 gigabytes of RAM, so 4096 would be half of that in megabytes. Before you play a game, you'd want to purge the standby list. This will help get rid of stutters. Just make sure this program is always running in the background on your computer. Alright, it's time for MSI mode. Right click, run as administrator. This page will come up, and you'll see here on the IRQ column that we have four devices sharing IRQ16, which is bad and it increases our latency. So we wanna get these off of IRQ16 by putting things into MSI mode. And on top of that, things will generally perform better in MSI mode. So you can see I have a couple things in MSI mode already. I have my USB controllers, uh, my PCI port is in MSI mode. And this SATA controller is in MSI mode by default. GPU, that can go in. We can put that as high priority. Don't put this. This is already in. Ethernet can go in. I'll put it as high priority. Um, this is the PCI port that goes to my GPU. So we want this in MSI mode for sure. And I'll show you how to check to see if it's the right PCI port or not. So you would go to Device Manager view devices by connection scroll down to here 
you can see that it is the PCI controller that my GPU is on. So this should also be in high priority because they're both in high priority. Um, here is a PCI bridge, properties, details, driver instance path. The last number, the last line of numbers is 1158365. We click on this PCI to PCI bridge, 1158365. It's the as media, that's an MSI mode set to high. This can go in there, we can set it to high. Actually, these don't need to be on high, I don't think, but I'll keep it on. And now this is IRQ16. We wanna take it off of IRQ16. And now if we hit apply, all of these will be their own different numbers. Everything's in MSI mode and we're good. But this part of the guide is very system specific. Yours will look different than mine 99% of the time. So you kind of have to research like how you want to do things. Like you can't just hard copy this. Okay, now it's time for process lasso. Let's go ahead and install it. Untick start menu shortcuts. It'll give you some errors because we don't have task scheduler running. So it wants to start up with the computer, but it physically can't. So it doesn't really matter what you put in right here. Just copy me. Finish. Okay, okay. Now once you're in, go to Options, General Settings, Refresh Interval, Governor, set it to 10 seconds. Next option, CPU, Pro Balance Settings, Untick, Pro Balance, CPU, More, Configure, Foreground Boost, tick both of them. Next, we are going to open all of the programs that we might have on our computer besides games. So I opened up TeamSpeak basically. Then I'm going to press Control A on my keyboard, right click, priority class, always idle. And now you're done in here. Auto runs is a pretty simple part of this guide. Run auto runs as administrator, hit agree. This will come up. Go to the known DLLs tab section. Delete everything you can. Untick the ones that it doesn't let you delete. Now let's head over to not scheduled tasks, but services. Untick Mozilla maintenance service, Steam client service. Untick whatever you don't need. You do need NV display container. So keep that, and then we're done. Okay, replacing the hosts file is pretty simple. Let's go down to start, this PC, and the search bar. Let's enter in that location. Drag and drop our hosts file inside. I can show you what's in this hosts file, actually. It is a lot of different sites. A lot of nasty sites are added to this hosts file. And if you don't know what a hosts file does, is it will prevent your computer from accessing a certain site that is within that file. So by having a ton of different nasty sites compiled into that one file, you're gonna be protecting yourself pretty effectively with no system cost at all. All right, for the Steam client, let's right click the shortcut on the desktop, go to properties, under target, let's add hyphen, no hyphen browser, apply, okay. Then under Steam Settings Interface, untick all of these things. You can change your taskbar preferences if you want. Okay, okay. And that's it for Steam. Now to disable full screen optimizations, go to your game's exe file, right click at properties, go to the compatibility tab, change settings for all users, make sure disable full screen optimizations is ticked. Then go into change high DPI settings and make sure that is being managed by the application. If you're like me and you disabled the task scheduler, then you'll have to use the startup folder within Windows to get programs to start up with your computer. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go get process lasso governor real quick. Right click it, create shortcut, drag shortcut to desktop. 
Now let's go to ISLC, create a shortcut of that. And if you use MSI Afterburner to overclock your graphics card, you would also want to put that in the startup folder. But I don't use that, so... Go to run, type in shell colon startup, hit enter, drag these in. It's that easy, you're done.